meet Georgia. She's not a big fan of social media, but after attending a concert with some friends, Georgia posted a picture on Birdie, a privately owned social media site. The post included a caption with the lyrics from one of the songs played at the concert. Shortly after posting the picture, Birdie removed the post and sent a notification to Georgia. The notification explained that the post was removed because the lyrics included an offensive word which violated the website's policy. In her civics class, Georgia had learned that the First Amendment protects several rights, including free speech. Georgia thinks that Birdie's decision to remove her post violated that right. Is Georgia correct? Pause here and respond in the lesson PDF. There are a lot of common misconceptions about freedom of speech, particularly in the age of social media and the internet. One such misconception is the idea that private companies, including social media companies, are bound by the First Amendment. This is not the case. The First Amendment only applies to government action. This means private companies are free to set their own rules and standards that can limit or prohibit certain types of speech. Therefore, Birdie is allowed to regulate the content posted on their site and remove content posted by their users. However, if the government had demanded that Birdie remove the post or tried to force Georgia to delete her post, that would be a First Amendment issue. In this lesson, we're going to examine different kinds of speech to answer our essential question. What does freedom of speech actually mean? Our guiding questions for this lesson are, what kinds of speech are protected? What other forms of expression have been historically protected as free speech? And what kinds of speech are not protected? In this lesson, we will also focus on the theme, choices and consequences. Often when we study civil rights, we focus on what we are allowed to do. However, as members of a society, we also have to consider the consequences of our actions and how we can exercise our rights without infringing on the rights of others. Let's start with a basic definition. Freedom of speech is the right to express one's opinions or ideas without censorship, restraint, or fear of government retribution. This right is protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution and is considered a cornerstone of democratic societies. Okay, but what does that really mean? Basically, Freedom of speech means that individuals are free to express themselves in a variety of ways, including speaking, writing and publishing, broadcasting, and protesting. It also means that individuals have the right to share information and engage in open and free debate. Over time, the Supreme Court has issued decisions that have clarified what kinds of speech are protected by the First Amendment. These include political speech, which is a form of expression that seeks to influence public opinion or promote a political agenda. Examples of political speech include campaign speeches, political advertisements, and protests. Political speech also includes the right to publish or share opinions that criticize the government, including satire. Satire is a form of humor that uses irony, sarcasm, ridicule, and exaggeration to criticize public figures, institutions, and ideas. It is a form of social commentary that seeks to provoke thought and reflection by presenting its subject matter in a humorous and often exaggerated way. Religious speech is a form of expression that conveys a particular religious belief or perspective. It can take many forms, including sermons, prayers, hymns, religious literature, and personal statements of faith. The First Amendment protects the right of individuals and religious organizations to express their religious beliefs and opinions without interference from the government. The First Amendment also protects the right to not practice a religion and guarantees that the government cannot force people to participate in religious activities. Symbolic speech refers to nonverbal forms of communication and expression. This includes things like flags, and clothing, as well as symbolic acts like protests, gestures, and strikes. 
One of the most significant Supreme Court cases that deals with symbolic speech is Texas versus Johnson. In the case, Gregory Johnson was arrested for burning the American flag as part of a protest. The justices had to decide whether flag burning was a form of symbolic speech protected under the First Amendment's guarantee of free speech. In the majority opinion, Justice Brennan wrote that one of the most important principles of the First Amendment is that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. Pause here and complete the activity for our first guiding question. What kinds of speech are protected by the First Amendment? Over time, courts have recognized a variety of other forms of expression as being protected under the First Amendment. As we look at some examples, follow along and complete the activity in your lesson PDF. Political spending, or spending money to support political causes, is protected by the First Amendment. Why? This is based on a 1976 Supreme Court ruling where the court argued that spending money is a form of political speech because it allows individuals and groups to participate in the political process and advocate for their beliefs and interests. Therefore, limiting how much people can donate to a political cause would limit their ability to express support for a candidate, political value, or political organization. Anonymous speech means expressing opinions, ideas, or information without revealing one's identity or personal details. Anonymous speech includes things like anonymous online comments or masked protests. Why is anonymous speech protected? Because it allows individuals to express controversial or unpopular opinions without fear of retribution or harassment. For example, the Federalist Papers, a series of influential essays advocating for the ratification of the United States Constitution, were written anonymously by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. However, anonymous speech is not an absolute right. There are some situations where the government can require individuals to disclose their identity, but the Supreme Court has held that anonymous speech is generally protected. Commercial speech is a form of speech that promotes a commercial transaction. Probably the most familiar examples of commercial speech are, well, commercials and advertisements. However, commercial speech is not given the same level of protection as other types of speech, such as political speech. Therefore, commercial speech is subject to regulations. For example, a commercial cannot make false claims about a product. The First Amendment also protects the right to artistic speech, which means sharing ideas, expressing feelings, and conveying messages using different media and platforms. Why is artistic speech protected? Because the method of communication does not determine whether or not speech is protected. Therefore, many different types of creative expression are protected, including visual art, literature, music, film, theater, dance, and even video games. If you did not complete the PDF activity, pause here and complete it now. Feel free to go back and review the video if necessary. There are also several different forms of speech that are not protected by the First Amendment. Let's look at five of the major categories of unprotected speech. First, incitement, which is speech that directly advocates for others to commit a crime or engage in violent behavior that is likely to happen immediately. Next, fighting words, or speech that is intentionally and likely to provoke a violent reaction from the listener and that has no redeeming social value. And threats, which is speech that communicates a serious intent to harm or commit a violent act against a particular person or group of people. Notice a trend here? All of these have to do with acts of violence, which could cause harm to others. Next is defamation, which is making false statements about a person or entity that causes harm to their reputation. Last is obscenity, which is speech that is offensive to contemporary community standards and lacks any redeeming social value. 
Both defamation and obscenity also deal with preventing harm, just not physical harm. Pause here and respond to the third guiding question. What kinds of speech are not protected by the First Amendment? As you probably noticed, these categories of speech are not clearly defined. That's why it's so difficult to come up with a simple, concrete answer for what freedom of speech actually means. In almost every case, factors like the speaker's intent, the setting, and the audience are used to determine whether or not speech is protected. And that's where the Supreme Court comes in. In the lesson PDF, you'll learn about some of the landmark Supreme Court cases that have helped define and clarify what free speech actually means. Until next time, keep making history. Hey, hey.